This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org. I'm Amy Goodman, with Nermeen Sheikh, as we end today's International Women's Day special, looking at abortion bans. Five women are suing Texas after they were denied abortions, even as their pregnancies posed serious risks to their health and were non-viable in the first such lawsuit since the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade. This comes as women's rights activists Monday called for the Inter-American Court of Human Rights to condemn El Salvador's total ban on abortions, which has been in place since 1998. The demand center on a case brought a decade ago by a woman, Beatriz, who died after being forced to carry a pregnancy, although the fetus could not survive. For more, we're joined by Selena Escher, a Salvadoran Swiss filmmaker who directed the award-winning documentary Fly So Far, about the criminalization of abortion in El Salvador, where dozens have been convicted and imprisoned after having miscarriages, stillbirths and other obstetric emergencies. Selena, welcome back to Democracy Now! It is great to have you with us. Um, we look from the United States to El Salvador. Is El Salvador the United States' future? Talk about the total ban, but also the resistance. Hello, Amy. Thank you for having me. Yes, exactly. In El Salvador, well, abortion is still criminalized. Um, um, there is no possibility to have an abortion in El Salvador. Women are still uh, criminalized and in, in prison. Uh, but there is a big resistance still happening in El Salvador, although we're living in a state of exception since one year. People have lost their human rights and people are being uh, unjustly incarcerated in El Salvador. There's a big movement who have tried to legalize abortion in four cases and also in three cases. But now uh, feminist leader uh, Lorena Peña, she's facing a law fair. She's being persecuted, and she's the woman who's also in my film. Uh, she wanted to legalize abortion in four cases, and now she's facing a persecution, political persecution. So, in, in general, there is a, an authoritarian regime happening in El Salvador, and feminist activists, journalists, uh, dissident voices, they, everybody is under threat, everybody is being persecuted. And yeah, this is a really a diff difficult situation that people are facing in El Salvador right now. Uh, Celia, could you talk about what happened with the release of your film, which was banned in El Salvador, and, and the stories that you hear from people who are featured in the film, if you could elaborate on those? Yes, exactly. Well, uh, last year in August, we wanted to have the cinema premiere in El Salvador. We have shown uh, our film in 90 international film festivals, so we decided to launch the, uh, to have the cinema premiere. But then uh, anti-choice uh, organizations, 12 organizations, made a legal uh, threat to the cinema if they show our film in the cinema. Uh, they will make a legal threat. So then the cinema had to take down our film, and so we didn't have the cinema premiere. Uh, they tried to silence the voices and the stories of the women of the 17, but we have shown our film uh, in community screenings together with the protagonist, Todara Vasquez, and her organization, Mujeres Libres, uh, across the country. So we are uh, trying and, uh, to show our film in many, many ways. But as we see, the evangelical uh, anti-choice groups have so much power. They are trying to silence us and trying to silence the stories of the women. And could you talk more, uh, uh, Selena, about the origins of this law? You mentioned uh, in 1998 uh, this new abortion law. How did it begin? And uh, where do you see it going now? Well, uh, abortion was legal in three cases before 1998. Then it was a total ban of abortion in all cases. It was not possible to have an abortion, even if your life is in danger in cases of rape or the fetus will not survive outside the womb. So in, in no cases was uh, legal. And feminist organizations have been trying to legalize abortion since more than 30 years. Uh, but it has been really uh, difficult and almost impossible to, to legalize abortion in El Salvador. Uh, now, um, feminist organizations have brought the case of Beatriz in front of the Inter-American Court, and we are hoping that with this case will open up for, uh, for the cases of the other women, and it will force El Salvador to change the abortion law. 
Um, last year, also, the case of Manuela was held in front of the Inter-American Court, and the Inter-American Court ruled in favor of Manuela, saying that El Salvador is guilty for all human rights violations committed against Manuela. Uh, but the government has done and nothing, and they don't want the uh, Bukele doesn't want to change the abortion law. He already said that he will keep uh, the um, life that begins the the life begins at conception. So he he only wants to be reelected, but he doesn't want to change the abortion law. So, so we will try with this case to open up and to make more pressure to the Salvadorian government. Uh, Selena, tell us about these cases that are before the uh, Inter-American Court of Human Rights, the case of Manuela that you just mentioned, and Beatriz. Well, Manuela was a woman who lived in the countryside. She could not read and write, and she was pregnant. She had cancer, and then she had a miscarriage because of the cancer. Then she was uh, criminalized in the hospital. She was sentenced to 30 years of prison, and she died in prison, leaving two sons behind. And what we want is justice for Manuela and justice also uh, for Beatriz. They are both women who lived in a situation of poverty. They needed to have an, an abortion. For example, the other example, uh, the case of Beatriz, uh, she had lupus and she was pregnant, but the fetus had no brain, so he didn't have any chance of survival outside the womb. Uh, so she asked the court to have an abortion, but they denied her. And so the state forced Manuela to keep the pregnancy. And it was torture for her for seven uh, months. Uh, it was really a torture for her. And then she the, well, she had gave birth with the C-section. And then uh, the fetus died after many, uh, like uh, after three hours. And then she died uh, years later because of the health issues he, she had. So the state is forcing women to keep pregnancy, also forcing young girls who have been raped to keep a pregnancy. This means torture for the women and girls. Uh, so this is a, a this Selena, two cases. We yes. just have a minute, but I wanted to ask you to put El Salvador in the context of Central America and Latin America overall, where you have what Argentina and Colombia legalizing abortion. What's happening in Central America overall? Well, after uh, in Colombia and Argentina, uh, abortion was legalized. In El Salvador, uh, well, in Central America, happened a major set setbacks because more and more conservative right-wing evangelical politicians who are in power are causing a major setback in reproductive rights. For example, in Honduras, it is not even legal to decriminalize abortion, not even to talk about it in the parliament. In Guatemala, they made. Um, a law, a family law that also said that abortion is totally prohibited. In Nicaragua, abortion is also totally prohibited. And El Salvador is the country that is most uh, extreme law where women are uh, unjustly criminalized for 30 and 40, 50 years of prison for aggravated homicide. In Mexico, we have just 10 seconds. And in Mexico, well, in Mexico now, it's legal to, to have an abortion and it's anti-constitutional to criminalize abortion, though at, at least this it's uh, happening uh, progressive. Well, we want to thank you so much for being with us. Selena Escher is a Salvadoran Swiss filmmaker and the director of the award-winning documentary Fly So Far, speaking us to us from Stockholm, Sweden. That does it for our show. I'm Amy Goodman with Nermeen Sheikh. Uh, have a productive, successful, happy International Women's Day.